We're standing in the south end zone of Gillette Stadium. It's about a million eight hundred thousand square foot state-of-the-art NFL and entertainment venue. There's all different types of people that come here for all different reasons. And disabilities, they could be hearing or sight or mobility issues. We want anyone who comes to our building to have the exact same experience. Back when we were operating Foxborough Stadium, we were the most inaccessible venue for uh, fans with disabilities. Really, we have gone from the worst stadium to the best stadium. We exceed all ADA requirements, and a lot of that is due to uh, the work of Kevin. I get hired to do three things. One is to work on the design, to ensure that the architects are complying with state or federal access laws. Like, how do you integrate wheelchair seating into the design of a bowl? Look this way with me. We have a typical wheelchair and companion platform. A wheelchair user comes, you fold up the folding chair, and then what we did is we created this barrier to allow wheelchairs to get around each other and not worry about people surging into their seating space. The other issue was dealing with providing wheelchair users sight lines over standing spectators so that when something happened, like Tom Brady throwing a touchdown pass, row one would stand up, row nine would stand up. When you got to where the wheelchair users were, they could see over the shoulder of the people in front of them. You need to give wheelchair users the same type of choices that non-wheelchair users get. How do you make the building compliant from a path of travel? We're surrounded with accessible parking spaces located at every entrance point. We also have 12 or 13 elevators and a wide ramping system on both ends of the building. We have about 16 family restrooms. Could be a seven-year-old son who's had a car accident who's here with his mother. But if they need assistance in a restroom, they can come right in here. We had to work on the concession stands to make sure that they were all accessible, that someone using a wheelchair could get access to any point of sale. So we have accessible bars at all of our locations at 34 inches. But the big, big issues that we're addressing now are what do we provide people that are deaf, or hard of hearing, or blind, or partially sighted? When you go to museums now, they're just not sterile exhibits anymore. It was called the Patriots' biggest win since 17... If you're blind or partially sighted, you're wearing a headset, these 90-some-odd sensors will know that you're at a certain point and will begin audio describing what everyone is seeing. You're, you're holding it and you're deaf, captioning is then across the screen. The second thing I do is I design policies and procedures to make sure that the buildings comply, whether it's ticketing, it's emergency evacuation, it's employment. But the last thing I do is training. So I've developed these videos on how do you service someone blind at a retail store, how do you service a quadriplegic at a concession stand. So we're always tweaking the design of buildings, the training of people that work in the buildings, and the policies that make this building function correctly. When I have people come up to me because they had great experiences at a movie theater or a sporting venue, I feel good knowing that I had a big part in making their experience a positive and good one.